What's up everybody? So today I'm going to be showing you how to bench press more weight. Now when you're talking about this, it's important that you start from scratch because typically what I've seen and from my experience, a lot of people don't even know how to set up for the bench press. And once I teach them how to set up for the bench press, bench press form, bench press technique, their numbers shoot up immediately. Now when you're talking about creating this foundation, we're going to sum it up by five steps. These five steps are going to be starting from the ground, your feet, your upper back, the grip, your breathing, and the actual movement itself. All right, so five steps. Let's go ahead and start straight down from the ground. So as he sets up for the bench press, what I'm gonna have him do is I'm gonna have him pull his feet back, right? Get some tension right there onto the toes, onto the balls of the feet, and then he will lay his body back. This is when he can grab the bar if need be. Now right here, what we're focusing on when doing this is I want him to be able to drive through the toes, right? So as he's bench pressing, thinking about driving through the balls of the feet. A lot of really big powerlifting uh, world record holders will talk about pulling their quad or tearing their quad from how much they're pressing their feet into the floor and creating that extra leg drive. This, in a second, I'll show you how it is going to increase your max bench press and how to help you bench press more weight. All right, now step two, we're gonna be focusing on the upper back. So we already have the feet in place, now we're transitioning up to here. So for the upper back region, he should be squeezing his shoulder blades together, right? Almost sitting only the traps on top of the bench. So creating and over exaggerating that natural arch of the body that you already have. This will raise up all of this, right? So it'll help shorten the range of motion for many power lifters. This is very important. It'll also make sure that the base of what's going to be holding up all of that weight is safe and steady. If it's not steady, if those shoulder blades are loose, then that will result in injury. All right, so step three is going to be gripping the bar. So we've got one, setting up the feet, two, upper back, and now the third one is gripping the bar. So right here, it doesn't even matter your preference in terms of whether you go thumb away from where the knurling starts, whether you go ring finger on that ring, or whether you go super wide like him. This is important for all of those grips. So what I want him doing is what he's gonna do is he's going to set the bar right on all of that meat of the hand, right? So he's not going to be coming back like this where that wrist is bent. That will result in injury of the wrist. It'll result in long-term pain. Whether it doesn't hurt right now, in the future it will. So he's gonna roll that forward. There you go. He's gonna almost try to point those knuckles up to the ceiling. From right here, I want him thinking about breaking the bar. So rotating all of that, just like that. That will make sure that the bar has a solid foundation, has a solid base, and is going to be, stay nice and steady. All right, now the fourth thing I'm going to show you is the breath. The breathing of the bench press is probably the number one most important thing that you are going to get out of this video. I've worked up with a lot of athletes and even some of my NFL players do not know how to breathe appropriately. All right, so what we'll do is we're gonna unrack the bar. So we talked about that grip. I'm gonna have him thinking about bending that bar, breaking that bar, right? Keeping that tension. So right here, a big belly breath. He'll breathe in, unrack. Chances are when you unrack, you're gonna let out a little breath. So I want you to inhale more. Don't exhale, inhale more breath. Big breath, pull it down. And then press back up. And right there on that pressing back up is when he's going to exhale and he'll reset at the top, taking in more breath. Go and rack it. So the breath is really important and guys, you can take this and even transfer it over to your squat and deadlift. You creating this intra-abdominal pressure is really important to stabilizing the spine. You're breathing in through the diaphragm, which expands like a balloon three-dimensionally. 
So creating 360 degrees of stability. Now we're gonna go through the actual movement of the bench press. So keep in mind, this is gonna be completely different from the way I bench press because I bench press uh, for powerlifting in a bench shirt. So that is a whole separate video that I will cover later. So for general bench press purposes, he's taking that big breath, big abdominal breath, squeezing that bar, unracking it and pulling it out. So from right here, what I want to do to engage the lats is still think about breaking that bar, pulling those elbows in and bringing that bar to the chest. Each second that you bring it down, you're bringing those elbows more and more in. And all you're gonna do is shoot up from that, all right? So still keeping the elbows somewhat in line to the position that they were in as you were coming down. You don't wanna flare out too much because like I said, this is not powerlifting. This isn't, you're not using a bench shirt. This is just standardized bench pressing. So you wanna make sure that you keep those lats engaged, which is what you're doing by bending those elbows and bringing that down. Demonstrate one more time. Bring those elbows in, creating that tension in the lat, and then push up, just like that. All right, boom, bracket. Now those are the five steps to help you create a solid foundation and help you bench more weight. All right, now if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your powerlifting buddies, your lifting buddies, your spotters, anybody at your gym. All right, until next time, stay strong.